When we talk about forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, you could spend a lot of time just in quietness, allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal to you where you have fallen short and then simply confessing it. And one of the scriptures I always hang on to in regard to confession or asking for forgiveness is 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Welcome everyone to our 87th podcast, Renew Your Mind. With us today, we have Pastor Paul Gruenberg, our senior pastor, and we have Jeremy Teru, our youth and family director, and myself, Dana Hall, as the moderator. And our last two podcasts, well, we're talking about the power of prayer, and our last two podcasts, uh, we focused on the Lord's Prayer primarily. And um, I think each one of us think that there, that there's a perfect way to pray, and there's a certain set amount of time that we need to pray for and a certain time of day. And if we don't check all those boxes, we're just not doing it right. So, Pastor Paul, does that remind you of anything that you want to share with us? Yeah. the When I got serious with the Lord, one of the aspects, of course, for a lot of people is this idea of prayer. And what is the right amount of time to pray? You know, some people can say, um, I can't even pray five minutes, let alone two minutes. I'd be the other way around. I can't pray five minutes, let alone 25 minutes. So I had an experience when I was working downtown uh, Detroit in the Renaissance Center. I would take a bus to work. It was a smart bus or a SEMTA bus. Pick it up in Livonia and go all the way down. Well, that's about 40 minutes once you get into Detroit, there are a number of stops that occur before you get to the Renaissance Center. And so I began, uh, I would read uh, scripture sometimes, and then other times I would just pray. And I would use the Lord's Prayer as a model. Well, let me tell you, there were times when I got down to work and I hadn't even finished mm-hmm. praying the Lord's Prayer as a model. Sure. And when you're serious about God, and God is serious when God is serious about you, you can spend a lot of time talking with God and listening to God. When we talk about uh, uh, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, you know, you could spend a lot of time just in quietness, allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal to you where you have fallen short and then simply confessing it. And one of the scriptures I always hang on to in regard to confession or asking for forgiveness is 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And in remembering that, I guess in my mind, the cleaner I can be, the more pure I can be of heart, the less, again, it comes down to barriers, uh, the less barrier there is between myself and God. And so when we talk about the Lord's Prayer, there are plenty of things that you can pray regarding the Lord's Prayer. And I would spend, I'd spend five or 10 minutes just in adoration um, or acknowledging who God is, God, my rock, God, my savior, God, my redeemer, my counselor, my friend, uh, the director of my life. And Old Testament has a bunch of different names, my banner, my healer, my, um, just a ton. And if we were to take a little time to get to know the names of God, we could spend easily 10 minutes at the beginning of the prayer, just acknowledging who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And each of those things can lead to another thing, you know, uh, God, my banner, whom I follow. You know, where are you going to lead me today? You know, who is it that you want me to talk to? Who is it that you want me just to be a good friend to? You know, those kinds of things all of a sudden start springing up out of this model prayer. And all of a sudden, like I said, I could spend a 40, 45 minute trip down to the Renaissance Center and not be finished. Mm -hmm. And it's all of a sudden, it's amazing that prayer, you don't have enough time for it. And so when we're serious about using the Lord's Prayer or some other models, 
yeah, two minutes is not a problem. 25 minutes may not be a problem, you know, an hour. Uh, Those kinds of things will happen if we're attentive to God, uh, if we follow this kind of a model, the Lord's Prayer in particular, because it's got a number of different aspects to it. If we follow that, we can spend time with it. And I think, Dana, you said not as a checkoff list. Mm -hmm. There's that aspect of, okay, I've acknowledged my father. Now I want to worship him. You could spend another 10 or 15 minutes going through the Psalms, just worshiping God. Mm -hmm. And once you're done there, then it's, you know, what are the needs for the day? Well, each day changes. There's some, of course, specific needs that we have daily. But there are those things that come up in our lives where it creates a different need. Um, Once you've done that, then you're talking about forgiveness and and then moving on to... um, are you are you right now because before this podcast we were talking about um the acts model um mm-hmm. I know you're using the Lord's prayer as your model right now but did you also did you only use the Lord's prayer as your model on that bus ride or did you use other um other models Well acts um mm-hmm. acts is a an acronym for adoration confession thanksgiving and supplication and I've used that before too. Mm -hmm. Um, It just depends. Sometimes you want to change it up. Mm -hmm. Oh no. (laughs) Yes. Change it up. Uh, That's fine. Uh, God understands our need to be um, not inventive, but to be creative in how we uh, approach God Mm -hmm. from time to time. But the adoration, uh, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication is another wonderful model to use to help guide you Mm -hmm. through your time with God. And again, a part of it is to guide you, which means that you're not doing all the talking. Mm -hmm. Remember, communication is always a two-way street. Yeah, that ACTS model has been brought up in one of my small groups and a Sunday school class. So I had never heard of it until, I don't know, this past couple months, but I really like it. But I struggle with the word supplication I know what it means, but where did where did that word come from? Does anybody know? Supplication means, I think, praying for yourself or for others. Yeah, I, I think with supplication, it um, speaks to praying for God to meet our needs and coming to him with requests about those needs. Okay. And we, we talked in the last uh, podcast about God wanting to meet our needs. He's He's our father. He gives us good gifts. He he wants to be our provider. And so coming to him, supplication and petition to meet our needs is is what he wants. And, and that's, mm-hmm. of course, where our needs are truly met, physically and spiritually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then the other, the other one in that part of the acronym is intercession. And mm-hmm. as you mentioned, Dana, that can deal with praying for other people. Okay. Um, interceding in prayer on behalf of others is something that we're uh, very led to do as Christians. That may be your family. That may be somebody dealing with a health concern, Mm -hmm. um, a number of things, but that's interceding for others in prayer or over situations. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, What other models have have either one of you used? Um, I guess I've used a prayer journal because it helps me Mm. Um, to remember all the things that I that I would like to do when I pray, and and I'm kind of tactical, so I like that. So I don't, you know, I don't know how often people use prayer journals or prompts, but um, what other models have either of you two used or heard of other people use? Yeah, I think um, Pastor Paul mentioned the Psalms and there's, you know, certain liturgies that are really useful too. Even the creeds, the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed Hmm. that provide biblical statements of our faith. Uh Um, What I like about some of these things is that it just provides a framework for you to stay focused. And it's not, we kind of talked about, we're not looking at it as some kind of, you know, checklist or list of rules that we're just trying to get through. Mm -hmm. We're not making it a, that sort of thing. It's always relationship with God. It's talking to God as our father, as our friend, as our provider, as our savior. 
Mm-hmm. But but those those liturgies, the psalms and the creeds, they they just give us some nice guidelines to stay in, and even the acts acronym that we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. It's a nice framework to help us sort of step through and and hit on these key areas while letting the spirit lead us in, you know, specifically what that's meaning for us in our lives at that time. Mm-hmm. So. Right. You, and, and in order for the spirit to lead, we have to listen. We do. So we, let's talk about that listening, the listening part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How and, easy or hard is that to do? <laughs> right. And that, and it is, uh, we, um, we come to God with supplication and needs and different things like that. So we, and he wants us to, and, and it, we can find ourselves really pouring our hearts out to him. But as Pastor Paul said, it is a, not a one-way street, it's a two-way street. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, again, with a friend or a spouse, you typically don't call somebody up on the phone and talk for 10 minutes and then say goodbye and hang up without allowing them to respond. <laughs> sometimes um, we sometimes, probably do. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> we might, yeah. Um, so it is part of prayer, part of your prayer time is you not doing the talking and doing the listening, seeing what um, what impressions, what thoughts are coming into your heart and mind. Mm-hmm. That's the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we have the Holy Spirit living in us, speaking mm-hmm. to us, guiding us. Allow time for thoughts to form, for you know feelings and impressions to take shape within you. Sometimes you hear the still small voice of God inside you. Mm-hmm. And Dana, you mentioned journaling, and I love that too. I, I'm not as as good about that. My wife is very, very good about that, and I I think that's a great thing. But you know, well, just remember, it's a style that fits her too. It's a style mm-hmm. that fits her, and I love that about her. And she'll just write down, you know, what's coming to her in prayer, and you know, um, the Spirit speaks to us, and that's so just as important as us doing the talking is is the listening as well. I'm curious, uh, the listening part, do you, um, when either of you pray, do you listen at the end, in the middle, varies? So here's my story on Uh listening. (laughs) When I, again, first uh, got serious with the Lord, I had a, there was some people in our church that would say that they could really hear the Lord. And so, of course, here I am in my early to mid twenties. And I'm like, how (laughs) I want to be able to do that. You know, what's the switch? What's the trick? And I remember uh, a friend saying, well, you know, get on your knees at your bed and get a pad of paper and, you know, be talking to the Lord and just be quiet and listen. And then I woke up with my head on the bed (laughs) (laughs) because I wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't something that I was able to tune into. One of the things I've come to realize through the years is the importance of knowing scripture. Uh, When you have hidden God's word in your heart, when you have read through it so many times that some of those words, they actually stick. And interestingly enough, oftentimes those are the words that God brings up to mind when you're listening. Uh, when you are being reminded. Um, it was just uh, the other day, uh, I was going through my day and I can't remember specifically what it was, uh, a temptation or something like that. It was a temptation and uh, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man came to mind. And I'm like, <laughs> and and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do this anyway. And it's like, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. All right, Lord. <laughs> you know, it's one of those moments where God speaks through the word to our hearts. And especially when we hide God's word in our heart, uh, we are more able to discern mm-hmm. when God is speaking to us, as opposed to not that God can't speak to us in any other way, but. I find that knowing scripture, especially knowing those parts, now we talk in terms of healing. Uh, There are specific things that I like to do uh, for a healing prayer. Uh, Part of that is um, worship, acknowledging who God is. Another part of that is confessing any known sin so that there I'm removing as many barriers as I can. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's any scripture in there, I love to throw scripture in there because, you know, if God said it this way, then God's got to be, I hate to say it this way, beholding to his word. He will do what he says he will do. Mm -hmm. And then um, sometimes I remind God that uh, Abraham uh, changed his mind or, <laughs> or Moses changed his mind. And so that reminds me that I may think God's got his mind made up on something that I should do or, or something, how I think it should be done. And yet God will relent. Uh, those are important things before, and that's before I ask for healing. And um, there have been a couple of times where God's given me that kind of healing. Uh, and it's just, you know, at, at some point I throw up my hands and I'm like, God, we've done everything we can. You know, mm -hmm. you're the only one who can bring uh, healing or restoration in this particular situation. And God answers that prayer. Mm -hmm. I think when we cleanse ourselves, when we make ourselves as whole, you know, Jesus was completely dependent upon God. And so if we're completely dependent upon God, I think God, he's that heavenly father who wants to give us good gifts mm -hmm. from above. So those are aspects, again, of where we can go or listening to God. Uh, I think through the word is very, very important. You know, when we're you talked about journaling and I've done journaling. I've mm -hmm. kind of walked, not walked away from it, but put it aside for a while. And journaling for me only happens after I've read scripture. Mm -hmm. And then I'm asking God as I'm reading scripture, God, what do you want to tell me? What are you trying to uh, help me to see that I can't see? I'm glad you said that because I was going to ask you if, <clears throat> what if you're a new Christian and you don't have all these scriptures, um, you know, memorized in your brain, you know, how do you hear that through prayer? Mm -hmm. And you just pretty much answered that, you know. That's a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, uh, it's a little book, it's called a promise book or uh, it's God's promises. There mm -hmm. are different that forms of it. black. The different, yeah. they come in different uh, covers, but it's just uh, scripture for certain situations. Mm -hmm. You know, scripture if you're angry, you know, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Uh, there are probably, I'm going to guess, maybe 100 to 150 scriptures in those little books that take you through uh, from A to Z different things that we experience in these scriptures are helpful. So you can use that kind of a book to get to know scriptures. For instance, let's say you struggle with anger. There's probably five to eight scriptures on anger there. And those would be the ones that I would want to hide in my heart. And those will be the ones that God will bring up to your mind uh, when you're struggling with anger or when you're about ready to get anger or mm -hmm. when you're ready to go to bed and, and you're still angry and it's like, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Um, so those are the, that's the importance of scripture and how it plays a role in our time with God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, with that, I think we'll wrap up this podcast. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we are located, the First United Methodist Church, we're located at 215 South Center Street in Gaylord, Michigan. We have a traditional 9 a.m. service on Sunday and a contemporary at 1045 a.m. You can join us in person or you can join us via Facebook or YouTube. Um, if you have any questions, call us at the office, 989-732-5380 or uh, check out our website. Just Google First United Methodist Church of Gaylord, Michigan. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.